Hey, what's up guys and welcome back to Ask NK. So, the folks at Adobe have recently released Photoshop Mobile. Now, this is quite interesting as it does come with a lot of cool and nice features. Of course, we're going to talk about a few things which I think a lot of you guys need to know. And how you get started with this is pretty simple. Currently, this is being rumored not to be available on the App Store for US, but right here in the UK, this is available. So, you can actually go over to the App Store, download this, and start working with it. The folks at Adobe have now completed the cycle of having Photoshop across all platforms, from desktop stop to web, iPads, and iPhones, with plans of bringing this to Android coming soon. Now, before you install the app, I'll definitely suggest that you have about 2 gig of free data storage, as this is something that is required from Photoshop for you to get started. I think it is about the whole caching thing that happens on the desktop, and yeah, you need to have enough space for you to get started with this. And so once you open this up, the user interface looks pretty nice, pretty clean. You do have a couple of, you know, guides that can help you get started. And from here, you can just simply get started by either importing an image, starting from blank canvas, generating an image, or you can actually work with Adobe Stock Images. So you can get started with any of this and start creating. Now, there's a few things that this actually allows you to do, which I think is pretty interesting. First off is layers. So you have all of that kind of layers that you can work with pretty nice. You also have layer blending options and that is really cool. Like the fact that you have the blending options, you can also throw in opacities and all that. That makes a lot of sense because uh, there's a lot of times that you might want to edit and you just want an image to be right on top of an image and you like to work with it. That is pretty dope. Other things that exist within the layer properties includes mask. You can create mask. You can actually from tapping to clean up a mask all the way to using the quick select, the lasso tool, the rectangular, magic wand. All of that is currently available. And if you choose to use the pen, maybe you like to use the brush, you can increase the brush size, reduce the brush size, invert the mask if you want. Pretty cool stuff. Other stuff that is also currently available for this is selecting area. So you can also do the same thing like, you know, tap to select areas. There's also the retouching section offering options like the spot healing brush. It also offers some retouching tools like the generative remove, the clone stamp, lighting, darken, all of that. So you do have these beautiful options and we've also got paint brush. So typical paint brush for those who like to sketch paint, you know, do all of that stuff that is currently available. There are some things that I think a lot of people would want to know. Adjustment layers. Yes, there is adjustment layer. So if you click on the plus sign, you can throw in an adjustment layer, you know, tweak things a little bit, depending on where you want to make. And speaking about adjustments, you can choose to clip your adjustments however you want. And the same thing can be said for every other thing that exists there. So you can actually select the layer and go over to the layer properties and clip that to the underlining layer. You can also throw in an empty layer if you like to build on top of that. Maybe you're trying to, you know, do some quick compositing. That is also very possible. It also offers a few layer type layer where you can simply throw in a text, you know, design some things that actually fits what you're trying to make. And speaking about layers, every single layer has its own property. And this means that to any of the layers that you select, you can go over to the properties of that layer and make changes. You can also rearrange these layers however you want, and you can make interesting designs and you know, just play around with it. This is a fun tool to work with. And by the way, if you're thinking about working with blending options, this is not available for the mobile version of Photoshop. Hopefully that will come in subsequent updates, but only time can tell. And once you're done, you can either export as PSD, TIF, JPG, PNG, and so on. However, in the typical Photoshop style, Photoshop for mobile is available in two tiers. They've got the free tier and also the premium tier. So within the premium tier, there's a lot of things that we mentioned that you would actually need to pay for. Things like Magic One are for premium, the remove tool is for premium, clone stamp, content aware, you know, working with tons of generative, you want to do lots of generative stuff, that is also premium. Now there's also something that I noticed. Unlike other tools where you get to ask a specific question and then you get a specific image. For example, we asked for a cowboy, a cowboy's hat, we did ask for a face cap, we asked for, for several things and these just simply give us a full image with those things. We we're just looking for the object itself so we can place it on our main image, but that is not the case. Hopefully that is not the case with the premium version. And once you're done creating whatever you're making, you can only export as PNG, PSD, TIF, JPEG is for premium. Photoshop is an amazing tool and it would reach its potential on devices that supports pen input and the iPhone isn't one of them. However, working with these on the iPhone is quite fun. You know, it is pretty fun because you can edit stuff on the go. 
It offers a lot of things like you can edit stuff on the go if you have the premium version and it is pretty interesting especially for those who like to upload stuff on social media. However, if you're looking for something that you can use for quick design stuff, all of that, possibly get an iPad, you know, get an Android device that supports pen input as this is just for quick photo edits and not for like a full blown design stuff. And I think is this do not support auto orientation. So you can only work with this in portrait mode. It would be nice to see that you can flip this in landscape mode. I mean, that would make sense. Photoshop is now available for mobile and iPhone specifically, completing the cycle of Apple users being able to use Photoshop anywhere and on any device. Tell me what you guys think about this one in the comment section. And of course, if you like this video or you like something from this, you can go ahead and give a like and don't forget to share with a friend. And I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace.